Well, hey guys, as you can tell, the sun's setting and uh, it's about time to uh, pack it in for the day. So, thought I'd just give a, a quick update on where things sit at the moment. Uh, finished the George and I took some pictures so I could document the build, and I'm going to put together a video on that probably tonight. Go uh, put it in the light box and take some uh, nice pictures of it. And uh, the Vostok, I haven't had a chance to get back to, but it looks like an old AM station with all those bloody antennas. And, yeah. uh, the Swordfish, I went ahead and ordered some uh, 0.03 millimeter easy line, so I'm going to go ahead and try and rig it. Uh, so it's kind of a little bit on hold. I might, I suppose I should go ahead and paint it uh, before I put the rigging on it. And uh, this showed up from uh, Ricky Wolf. Ricky, thank you. This came all the way from Lincolnshire. And he sent me some resin kits, uh, a Typhoon, a Hawk, and a uh, Saba, uh, the, the gri I think it's Gripen, Gripen uh, the, the Swedish fighter, and uh, a whole bunch of, of missiles and everything. And I've never built one like this before, so uh, it should be interesting. Um, nice, heavy, sturdy things, too. I mean, you can make a good desktop display out of this, probably that wouldn't be fragile. And if something did get knocked off, you just glue it back on. So, uh, this is some impressive stuff. It takes some filing to get the flash off of it, but that's, that's no big deal. You know, the tools for that, so we'll get to that as soon as I can. And uh, in fact, let's go over the table and show you what I, I got planned. Uh, oh, by the way, the the buffalo is still in the box. I haven't paid any attention to it yet. I don't think you guys, I don't think you guys even seen it. It's the check models. I've just had so many other things going on. Plus, I managed to break the old uh, Val a dive bomber that I had in my uh, for my old Midway models, I dropped something off the shelf on it because no matter where I put things, I still drop things on them because that's what I do. I'm like Wreck-It Ralph. Uh, so uh, let's hop over the table for a second and take a look there. Now, as I said before, you know, I'm not a huge car guy, so this is all going to be kind of new to me. Well, I mean, comparing them side by side, an AMT and an MPC. And uh, if I didn't mention, uh, this box art was done by Brad Leisure. Uh, touched base with him. He, or actually, he contacted me. He, he's seen a few of the videos, and uh, he said he wanted that uh, sort of car advertisement look from it from the period, and I think it's perfect for that. And uh, um, you know what? What the heck? Let's just go ahead and open the boxes. Now, one thing: this is a twenty-nine, thirty-dollar kit, and this is a twenty-dollar kit because this one you have uh, options: convertible or hardtop. And I'm inclined to make the convertible out of it just because this one's hard top, though I have one of each. And I probably told you guys at one point I almost bought, I think it was a 67 convertible. They went about 40 grand, fully restored down in Lauderdale, but um, I would actually like to stay married, so I didn't. Um, so, and uh, I don't know. I imagine if I told the wife I just had to have it, you know, but uh, as much as I love the old cars, that's, that's almost another house. Anyway, so let's uh, just go ahead and uh, take a quick look at these guys this evening, and we'll just heck, we'll just do this in real time. Oh, the sweet crackle of new cello. <laughs> it's better than unwrapping a candy bar. Now let's not gorge ourselves. One at a time. One at a time. All right. Let's see what we have here. Everything's bagged up. Chrome parts. Uh, I guess those the red tail lights, the clear parts. The body, nice one piece body. A couple of sets of tires, so evidently they're giving you a lot of options here. That's, of course, why well, it costs more, but you know, you get what you pay for. Uh, all the, uh, the the hard top, the soft top, all the motor parts, decal sheet, um, instructions. Let's just see real quick what they have on the decal sheet. Okay, license plates, uh, all right. 
dashboard. Okay, looks good. Let's put that back in the plastic. Let's take a look at the part everybody wants to see, the body. Now, as I understand it, the ability to make bodies like this is thanks to uh, uh, George Todiff, who invented the, slot, the side slide. Um, oh, it is. Okay, it's two parts. No, three parts. All right, there's a tub, body tub, body, and the underside chassis. Um, Todiff. If you remember a lot of the old kits that uh, all the panels and everything, they were all separate and you had to, you know, three big pieces like the Palmer kits and everything, pyro. Uh, that was because of the old style molding techniques. And uh, Todif realized that if you had the two things on the rails, you slammed them together and you have inserts that closed in, you could do three sides, the inserts would pop out and come out and you could have this nice three-dimensional unit like this. So. Anyone who builds models, especially model cars, owes a huge debt of gratitude to the late, great George Todiff. That's my understanding from the research I've done. If you know something else, or if I'm wrong, correct me. Ooh, -hoo, second candy bar. Boom, chicka, wow, wow, kit model porn, yeah. Mm -hmm. The Papa Sutto. Smell of styrene. New stuff that I actually have here. I don't suppose any guys happen to own a GTO. I mean, one of these old ones. The boss had a 69, I think. Maybe it was a 67 convertible. I only rode in it a couple of times. I was like, <laughs> you only have to. And you're like, woohoo! Fun! We'll have fun, fun, fun. Daddy takes us to the way. Fun, fun, daddy. Okay, chrome. I'm going to mix it up here, but compare the chrome sheets. Alright. Hold on to more detail when I do the builds. Four tires on this one. Um, Red lights, engine parts, decal sheet. I think there's a decal sheet. I better make sure I don't confuse the parts. He's, wow. Uh, yeah, there's the decal sheet. There's a big old set of instructions, unless they included more than one. What's this all about? We must investigate. Okay, put that right there. And 67 Pontiac GTO. I got five sets of instructions. Are these? They're all in different languages. Okay, all right. We know who's aiming at the international market. Okay, MPC. Modelo Escala. Maquette de Echelle. Modelo en Scala. Maastab? I'm not sure how. Ma ma I think that's true. Oh boy, I'm butchering this. I mean, my grandfather was German. I mean, off the boat German. I speak about maybe a hundred words. Fichtig. Ersch. Durlesen? Durchlesen? I don't. I, you know, I've actually studied a little German and I forget how you're supposed to pronounce that big B looking thing. Somebody out there knows. Put it in the comment section. And here we go. 125th scale model. So, can do something else with those. And the decal sheet, and you can see through it. See, it's it's a trim package. So let's just do the quick and dirty uh, comparison of the body holes. Do, 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 do. Hmm. All right, the. Uh, MT plastic looks a little whiter and a little, I don't know if I want to use the word translucent, but it's like I can sort of see the light through this one. Ow, my finger stuck. And not, eh, a little bit through that one, but 
it seems to have just a little bit of the less of the light pigmentation a hint more maybe maybe i'm being unfair but uh in there. let's just uh take a quick look at the two body shells keep these things separate i'm gonna have a mess on my hands Good detail on both of them. You can see GTO on both of them printed right there. So this should make an interesting comparison once we get going. Um, as much as anything else, I'm interested in the axle arrangements and the level of detail, but looking at the interiors, it looks to be pretty comparable. So we shall see how they all fit and go together when we do the build on them. And uh, I got a lot of appointments tomorrow. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to be able to put up tomorrow, if anything. And uh, physical therapy, doctor's appointments, stuff like that. So anyway. Oh, by the way, if you guys remember my chat with Mike Machette, uh, all these plastic bags were the uh, industry's answer to kids opening boxes and losing parts out of them while they were in the store. Uh, so they, they, you know, cellar wrap was, but people could bust the cellar wrap. So they started that apparently late sixties after a rather expensive study. That's why they decided to start putting stuff in plastic bags inside the box so that people snooping around the store wouldn't lose parts and et cetera, et cetera. So this one goes in here. That's also why they put the instruction sheets and decals on the bottom. And, uh, that was not, nothing was done by accident. Okay, I got my English instruction sheet right here, so I'll put the rest of these away. Well, this ought to be interesting, and uh, I doubt I'll get a chance to start on that tomorrow, but uh, who knows. And, uh, oh, guys, I had somebody ask how I uh, hang the airplanes. I have three eye hooks, and I made an L shape and uh, I ran a wire between them that I could hang all the models from. When I was a kid, we used to just stick a thumbtack in them and push them up into the popcorn sheetrock ceiling. But uh, what I have here is not conducive to that. But uh, you can uh, take a piece of wire and uh, you can put thread or anything you want to the uh, model to hang it from or monofilament line. A lot of people like monofilament. Some people find the center of gravity on the model and just put one line there and so it'll hang without a lot of lines on it. This was just things I cobbled together very quickly. This old uh, banshee has thread going around it but then I put a, uh, a twist up there of a little metal wire that I had because it was easy to shape. And then I literally just make these little twisted wire hooks and uh, and uh, that's about all there is to that. There's nothing cosmic about it at all. The uh, Wildcat is actually hanging. Uh, I ran out of space and the Wildcat's actually hanging from the little piece of wire I put on the, on the uh, Hurricane. So you literally have one airplane buddy hanging off another. The ones up on the wall kind of did the same thing. I just hung a wire and then I could hang them all with a little piece of the stretches across and hang it from their tails. Now there is one thing I will point out. I use the screw in eye hooks that you get at the uh, hardware store because uh, they're the only way to guarantee you have a really solid anchor point. And uh, you can get a box of them for you know, a dozen of them for like a dollar. Well guys, uh, Hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you guys later.